So my name is Tina K. Bernard. I work for Leadership Trust. Um, this series is called the Women in Leadership series, and it's here to celebrate females, encourage females, and at the same time, kind of myth bust. So kind of bust some of the leadership myths around um, working for yourself or um, being in management or um, being a leader and trying to explore some of the different um, facets of being in work, basically. This is the third um, episode in the series, and we're joined by Anne-Marie Saheb, all the way from Canada. Hello, Anne-Marie. Yeah. Hello. Um, hi. I'm going to let Anne-Marie explain more um, about herself, because I think that's probably the best way to do it. Um, basically, as I said, we're there to explore some of the myths around leadership in order to encourage others. One such myth is that everyone wants to become a leader or perhaps that leadership is only for those in management positions. So today, hopefully we will actually dispel one or both of these myths. Um, Anne-Marie, are you willing to describe yourself in your own words for us? Sure. Um, so I am an actor, first and foremost. Uh, I've done some training in professional theater and cinema and communication. And I am um, the artistic co-director of a theater company that's been on hiatus now for about five years, over five years. Wow. <laughs> so leadership, woo! Um, <laughs> and uh, for the past nine years about, I've held a, a position as an administrative assistant uh, in healthcare. So I've... Um, that and that's been my sideline basically a full-time job in administration was my sideline so i'm trying to i'm an actor so uh yeah so along the way i've held many jobs i've worked at many different uh places but it's always been admin where i've stayed the longest mm -hmm. and so i kind of developed skills uh by default i guess amazing thank you so much um so with your main love being acting as you said you're an actor first and foremost, do you feel that it makes you more likely to say what's on your mind, kind of regardless of the hierarchy of, or office politics? Yes, and I think that has a lot to do with uh, the stakes being low for me mm -hmm. in those jobs. Um, so obviously the higher the stakes, the more you have to lose, the harder it is to challenge or to speak up. Um, and, and it's also in combination with being able, having the confidence to stand by what you say or what you bring up. Um, so I think it's a combination of both. It's not necessarily that I've been lucky to have another career path. So yeah. this was never my career or my aim to have a career um, in these corporate jobs. But it's also the fact that I can uh, just stand by what I bring up. And it's that confidence that some people don't have. So it's, uh, and is this something that maybe you realized um, more lately? Is that something you think that you've always been able to have and act upon? I think in, in, in corporate jobs, I've always had it, uh, mm -hmm. unfortunately slash fortunately, because I've got zero ambition in the corporate world. So for me, your title means nothing. I have no mm -hmm. one to impress. I want to work well, absolutely. But as an employee, as a yeah. bottom ladder. So for me, if, if it goes badly, um, you know, if, if I don't like the environment anymore, then I even find a job somewhere else. Um, mm -hmm. If I get fired, then I change fields and find a job somewhere else. <laughs> so I've never, you know, to me, it's like, ah, oh, whatever, I'll just go work, you know, as anything that gives me money so I can continue acting. Yeah. So because of that, obviously, I've had the freedom of, of being able to not be scared of losing my job, for sure. And I recognize that 100%. However, as time went by, like holding a position for nine years, at mm -hmm. some point, and this is by working with uh, amazing colleagues and some really great managers and seeing some people in this environment and getting to know people and starting to be more invested and realizing it, that it was a huge part of my revenue, right? Yeah. Um, it did change my way of thinking. Um, and, and in the acting world, it's scarier for me to stand up and speak up and challenge mm -hmm. because I've got a lot to lose. But over the years with the experience I've had corporate in, corp in the corporate world of speaking up, it's taught me a lot. So now, even if I have a lot to lose, 
I can speak up much in a much easier way than before. That's amazing. So in a way, it's kind of complemented each other. It's complemented your ability to speak up in acting as well as your ability to speak up in your nine to five. Absolutely. So whether you have some, if you have nothing to lose, for sure, you're in a great position to speak up. But if, if you have something to lose, if you're an employee who wants to keep your job, if you're a manager, if you're directing, if you're head of a department, if you're leading something, you have a lot to lose, but then you're invested. And so you yeah. have more to gain by speaking up too. Because that's the thing, I have nothing to lose by speaking up. But when I speak up, if things change, all right, great. But you know, how long am I going to be here? I don't care. So there's also that. You have a lot more to gain. Talk to me about speaking up. So, you know, you've said it a few times, you know, you're having the bravery or the ability to speak up because of your quite unique position of not wanting to, I say unique, I'm sure there are many people, even maybe on this call, who don't necessarily want to climb that corporate ladder in that way. But because you've been in that position where you know that's what you want, you don't want to climb that ladder, you just want to be very good at your job and what you do. What kind of situations have you found yourself having to speak up about? Is it um, poor... Um, communication for management what kind of things oh it's been it's been um on many different things sometimes it's as simple as a procedure that's been going on for years um if for like a, for example an inter-establishment contract with invoicing and invoicing system that hasn't been changed mm -hmm. in 20 years i come along and i first of all i have to understand how to do it i mean two plus two i use a calculator so i needed to you know break it all down yeah. to understand and in the process of doing that, I realized this doesn't make sense anymore. We mm -hmm. can't do that. And so speaking up and saying, hey, I'm like not an expert, but here's what I've noticed. This needs to be addressed. Um, and it, it could be as far also as um, seeing intimidation in the workplace, non-professional conduct and having to voice it. And on that one, I wasn't, I didn't lead it. An employee stood up and said enough. And I just said, okay, I'll follow you. Yeah. You're the leader on this one, but I'll follow you, I'll back you up. Um, and it can be also um, about, yeah, uh, you see you see a way of doing things and eight people are being mobilized for one thing with 19 different emails. And then you can find a way to reduce that, that um, intervention mm -hmm. um, so it becomes more efficient. So then you have to propose, you say, hey, I know we've been doing it this way. I know I'm not the project leader, but this is what I suggest. And then you have to, you know, you stand by the fact that you brought it up you know it'll make things better and then you know work with the other people to see if you can actually make a change amazing thank you so you worked with Leah our CEO some time back and she told us a story about you implementing reusable water bottles <laughs> um <laughs> can you tell us more about that and why it's important to you and why it was important to you to kind of push through with that okay so it's very interesting because Leah and I did not remember that story the same way um, so, but, but, but now, but now I see it and I do remember it all the steps. So, uh, I was working for an international company who used to have water bottles with the company logo on it mm -hmm. available for all employees at all times for meetings and events. And, and I was ordering these bottles and I saw, so the first thing that happened is I saw the invoice for these bottles and it was the same amount as the contribution that a the poorest country in Latin America was making to the company yearly. Um, the invoices were the same and it hit me. And also I was noticing that employees were using sometimes between two and six bottles a day and not finishing them. And so to me, that was unacceptable. And, it, and so I brought up the idea of uh, stopping, to, stopping the use of single uh, use water bottles in the office at least for employees. Mm -hmm. um, and then, and I think I made like a couple page document with all the arguments and I left it at the reception desk for people to peruse at their own time. <laughs> and eventually, and so, and so that's it. So Leia remembers that it worked. And I remembered that people weren't happy that, um, you know, it took a long time and it took a lot of effort on my part. Uh, to bring it up and to, and to, you know, like make sure my arguments were standing and, um, and it didn't happen right away. And we didn't uh, get rid of all the bottles from what I remember. Mm -hmm. um, but, but in the end, what happened is my manager got it done. So we Please. did get filters installed on the taps. Um, 
so people could get clean water, hot or cold. And we got reusable water bottles given to each employee. So she got it done. Not my way, because the way I, I had suggested to implement it a certain way, slowly, you know, making people, you know, well aware of what was going to happen ahead of time. Yeah. And you've got your bottles for another month, you know, whatever. Uh, but it, it happened drastically. It was announced quickly. And um, uh, yeah, pe some people weren't too happy. Uh, but, but it happened. And mm -hmm. so in the end, my manager got it done. So, you mm -hmm. know, and some people were thrilled like the one Scandinavian director uh, that I recall was super happy he was like yeah I don't understand why this didn't happen before you so that's the story water bottle that's so cool and it's that thing of you know I don't know if you would see it in yourself but to me that's an example of leadership that's an example of you know taking the helm and moving forward and that was important to you and in this case you know it's environmentally conscious it's you know economically conscious as well you're saving the company money and saving the environment exactly and it wasn't healthy for the employees to be drinking these bottles that had been sitting mm -hmm. there for a long time in the warehouse and then you know yeah. like and then in our storage and so it, yeah no for sure and whether it worked or not honestly mm -hmm. you know like see I didn't even remember it working that well and <laughs> and and yeah still yeah I stood up and, and asked for something and and it did work even if it wasn't done exactly really? exactly fully it yeah. was done so every yeah. little victory is a victory and so way to go for the manager and for you know the bottom ladder person who spoke up do you feel in that situation it was something that you were able to do because you were just passionate about it anyway or because the whole um as you're saying before that kind of fear of well I'm not trying to climb the ladder so I don't mind if I ruffle a few feathers do you think that there were other people within the company, whether it's that example or in other examples where there may be initiatives they want to push forward with, but because they don't feel that they themselves are the leader, that they won't, or, you know, they're not in management, hence leadership? Yeah, definitely. But I think, again, that is where the managers in, have to instill this work, this environment where it's okay mm -hmm. to, to try. Yeah. Um, and it, and in acting, there's this saying, there's a director who told me this, and I'll never forget it. It's not the accomplishment that's fun to watch. It's the try. And it's the same thing in life. Like, as a company, of course you want to succeed. Of course you want to put on paper and on your reports that, you know, you want to show shareholders that you're, you're succeeding at what you take on. But, but the trying of it says so much about the company. Mm -hmm. And so, and so that should the employees, the project leaders, the managers, everybody should know that this is a place where you can try. Yeah. And you so know, you don't have to crush your entire credibility. You know, mm -hmm. a mistake in the past doesn't mean that you, uh, you know, yeah, didn't didn't act fast enough or didn't do the right thing. And a, a mistake in the present doesn't mean that that employee needs to be. Uh, brought down in any way mm -hmm. and it, it, that just creates fear doesn't it if if they feel that they're going to be brought down or that they're going to be punished in some way for their actions then it creates fear and why would they try and exactly and and when you keep trying to you drain you drain your employees yeah. if they keep trying and not succeeding and don't know why or keep trying and being told no um you you get exhausted there's this there's this there's this uh, you, you start to have this um uh, minimalist approach mm -hmm. as an employee and I guess as a leader too when you're always up against uh, politics and you're up against uh, things that that don't let you move forward with your project right? yeah. you just start to not trust and not um, believe in your employer and and then you lose a bit of respect and then you your efforts just aren't worth it and, and don't, don't get me wrong hierarchy is there mm -hmm. you know what i mean um mm -hmm. and you have to and that you respect it for sure but there's this but there's a difference between a hierarchy that's per, like the professional title hierarchy and the human hierarchy yeah. it's different and so there's no human hierarchy it there's just that professional for sure i agree uh, we've been using the words leader and manager somewhat interchangeably um, and I think 
it's important to note that being a manager doesn't necessarily make you a leader or a good leader. It may, it will kind of push you into a position of leadership, but it doesn't necessarily make you a good leader. And you can be a leader without, you know, being the manager of that team. The leader of that team might be um, the admin assistant for all you know, you know, whoever it is. What, in your opinion, makes a good leader? I mean, I think everybody's trying to answer that, right? Every single video, every single training, webinar, conference is trying to pinpoint what that is. Uh, and I think it, can, it varies according mm -hmm. to the company, according to your objectives, and according to uh, the people in those positions. But for sure, as a, as a leader, you have to recognize the best idea in the room and run with it, no yeah. matter who it comes from. That's leadership. Uh, you have to have an incredible amount of courage. Uh, whether you're a good leader or a bad leader, you have to have a, a courage because you are vulnerable. And mm -hmm. I recognize that now. A leader is always vulnerable. You're in that tricky place between position of power and being able to make decisions and having to be accountable for those decisions. And um, yeah, it's very tricky uh, and scary. Uh, so you have to you know, know who you are, know what your strengths are, know where you're not great, know what your triggers are as a human so that you know how to recognize it when it happens professionally, when something happens or when you're, you have a blockage or whatever. And uh, know your employee. Oh, know your employees. Like that probation period is is as much for the the, the managers as it is for the employees. Um, managers, you know, like discover who, th what their strengths are, who they are, what their goals and aspirations are. You know that that question: Where do you see yourself in five years? Well, yeah. okay, do you want me to be on it? <laughs> or, or do you want me to play the game? Because I know there's a game to play. Um, you know, if I tell you, yeah, I'm an actor, I'm going to be leaving every once in a while for auditions. And uh, if I get a, 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 an important role, I'm out. Like, I'll uh, you know, see you in three weeks. Um, is that cool? It's not going to work. But um, at the same time, know your goal, the goals and aspirations of your employees, because that's mm -hmm. how you use, that's how you motivate them. Because yeah. I, I, I'm a, I'm someone who has no corporate ambition, and yet I stayed somewhere for nine years. Mm -hmm. I, you know, along the way, I can be motivated, and and especially someone who wants that career, they can they could they, they could be loyal to your company forever mm -hmm. if if you do it right. Um, so yeah, know your and coach your employees. If if you go past that probation period, you keep your employee, and there's something that's not working out, address it, mm -hmm. address it professionally, coach them. And, and continuously adapt as a leader, continuously try to become a better leader and then make those tools that you've acquired available to your team. Let them come up with you. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and at the same time, employees, like that probation period, an employee is also, need, also needs to know who the company is and what their mission statement is and what the goals are for your where you're working, what your team is, and be honest about it. Because if, if that company can't be honest about it, if you can't get a straight answer, or if the answer doesn't suit you, leave. It's not for you. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. And that's yeah, and that's okay. I mean, that's really powerful. It's okay to you know on both sides of the part of both parties. That's okay. You yeah, said, yeah, go ahead. Sorry, you could be in an excellent job. I've, I've done it. I've been in a great job. I could have stayed there my entire life. An excellent mm -hmm. job. You know, and it wasn't for me. And that's okay. And as a leader, you could be leading exactly like you have the best title. And yet, that's not what you want to be doing. That's okay. Just go get what's right for you. You said um, a lo loads of great things as to why someone can be a good leader. Have you seen... Are there any common pitfalls that you see, you know, you've had a long career and you know, said one job, nine years. Did you see any particular pitfalls that leaders fall into time and time again? You know, it's probably all the opposite of what you said. So, you know, maybe not being great at communication or thinking they're the smartest in the room. 
um, are there any pitfalls you see and can we then help those who are on the call stop themselves from falling into those same um, habits? Yeah, um, this is this is tricky because I'm I'm seeing it from the outside, so it's mm. easy for me to see things and call people out on something, and then obviously, if I was in their position, I'd probably, you know, do do the same thing. It's yeah. really tricky. I really recognize how tricky it is to lead or to be a manager. It's it's really tough. Um, and I think that I think the biggest pitfall is that is maybe letting that pressure um, stifle what you are good at. Um, mm. You know, as much as there are people in these positions who really shouldn't be there, who aren't good leaders, they've got the knowledge, they've got the expertise, they've got the credentials, but they just aren't good leaders, and so they shouldn't hold those positions. But there's also people who really deserve to be there. Mm. They just need to adapt to the leadership position because there is, you've got to adapt. Um, and to your team, you don't always yeah. have the perfect team. So, you know, um, and I think one of the pitfalls is that it's as a leader being so scared to make that mistake or to being called out on something that you play this uh, accountability avoidance uh, front. You put up a, an accountability avoidance front. So it makes you basically a little bit untouchable Mm -hmm. or um, be so anchored into your direction that you save yourself the idea that you could yes. be failing. And why is it so scary to fail? First of all, let your employees try and fail and give yourself that same uh, leeway. Like, mm -hmm. like you are entitled to try and fail. Yes, there are consequences own up to them, address it, fix it if you can, move on, repeat. And so you have to be able, you have to know that that's what you're getting. And, and, and just trust yourself and go get what you don't have. If you're not excellent at something, go get that webinar. There's things on YouTube that cost nothing for seven minutes that will teach you stuff. And if you're in a management position, your employer should be able to coach you and help you through. You should sure. be supported. Yeah. I think Go you mentioned as well the, the toolbox and how important it is to kind of create your toolbox to, you know, in a way you have to pick and choose, you know, what, what areas are you not so good at and what do I need to fix that for? And whether that's you're, you're doing it yourself, as you said, YouTube is free. Google is free to, you know, to find out what you need but also the support from your company. Do you need a coach? Do you need a mentor? Do you need sponsorship? Yeah, yeah. whatever you need in whatever form you need it, that works best for you, go get it and, mm -hmm. um, and ask for what you need. Yeah. This goes for employees and managers. Ask for what you need. At worst, you get a no. So what? Then you'll move on to, you know, plan B. Um, for sure. But ask, ask. I think for me, one of the biggest things that I found really liberating is when I learned that it's okay to not know. And actually it's okay to just say, I don't know. You know, I don't know, I'll, I'll find out for you or I'll figure it out or does anyone else know because I don't. And it doesn't make you a poor leader. It doesn't make you a poor manager. It just means you're human because none of us is the hold of all the information in the world. And it makes you a better leader. It makes, it means you're, you'll, get lo you'll get loyalty out of that, you know? And, and then you won't have to be so scared or paranoid about your team thinking mm -hmm. you incompetent or talking about you uh, in a negative way or nitpicking every little, trying to, trying to find a mistake you've made or trying to catch you in an error. Gosh, like it's horrible to live that way as an employee and yeah. as a manager. So to stop that, make it okay to make these mistakes and try. And, and then when you recognize it, that, that's something that makes you a good leader. Identify the problem. Mm -hmm. and and work to prevent them yes like that you'll be respected as a leader if you do that no matter whether you succeed or not exactly and then yeah and we you can defend question. it you can defend yeah it. Sorry. exactly we had a question which i didn't miss so leah says how can you manage so how can your managers get to know you what would you need from your manager to see that they are trying to get to know you oh okay so well, I mean, to see that they're trying to get to know me doesn't take much. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. 
because I, you can, I can be fooled into thinking a manager is trying to get to know me simply by asking like, oh, so, you know, what are your goals? What would you um, like to do in this company? Actually, you know what? Whether it, they're fooling you or not, doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. It's the same thing, actually. So you, so I've been asked by one excellent manager, uh, what would you like to do in this company? Would you like to get, what are the tasks that you would like to get so that you will be motivated? Yeah. Like, wow, like, really? Okay, well, first of all, that makes me think. Um, so I'd love this, I'd love that. And then it makes you also see what your tasks are now and what it is that you do like in the tasks you're doing. So, mm-hmm. you know, change your attitude and do them better because you actually like doing that stuff. Yeah. So that's not where the problem lies. It's something else. Um, and so, and to give you an opportunity sometimes to work on things you actually are motivated to work on. That's wonderful. Even if you get one little thing once in a while. Mm-hmm. That's great. Uh, and, and I think that that question of where you see yourself in five years to actually ask it once in a while. Yeah. Honestly. Not, not with a strategy in mind, like what does your employee want? And then, and then what, how could that fit into the company? Because if you make my goals and aspirations fit into the job I'm doing, yeah. I'm probably going to stay. I'm going to stay. And that's valuable because you won't have to train somebody else. <laughs> you know? Yeah, um, for sure. And of course, and everybody knows this, to just recognize good work goes such a long way it really mm-hmm. does because even if you know you, you hear it and you don't really react but it does stay with you subconsciously it really does uh, for sure and oh my god I, I like we could we could talk about only this question forever <laughs> there, do it like, do some more yeah um um co- offering coaching that's one too. Okay, so I've noticed that you know this is something you're not great at, or uh, or this is something you voice that you don't like doing. Uh, could could we offer this training? Or hey, would you that to having training available? Mm-hmm. Uh, wow, like you know, and and if the employee's not interested in the training as I was in the last years of where I was, just like don't care, don't want it, <laughs> um, <laughs> then. That tells you a lot, you know, that yeah. company, that, that employee is not doing well. Um, <laughs> or maybe else. need to, you know, uh, be held accountable and, and that person needs to make a decision. You stay and invest or you leave and we give mm-hmm. your spot to somebody who wants to be there. That's okay too, you know, there, you've got to be able to know how, how and when to let go of an employee. And I know these things are tricky too, because you can't just let go of an employee, but, yeah. but again, the human. Because that employee, mm-hmm. talk to them. If they, if they are not well, they might say, you know what, you're right. I have to leave this company. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Maybe. That's really useful. And I can imagine the higher up a leader you become or higher up within management you climb, it must get harder and harder to um, have, have your employees connect with you, maybe uh, human to human. Because they also, they also have that barrier of, oh, this is my boss, or you know, this is the person who makes those decisions. Absolutely. Is that to, to be expected, or is there some other ways leaders can kind of combat that and still have people speak to them openly and honestly? Is that something that is a personality trait? Is it something that we just need to kind of take as a given? They're not going to speak to you because you're in a position of leadership. What, what do you think? Um, no, I think, again, the thing to remember is there is no recipe. There is mm-hmm. absolutely no recipe to this. It depends on the team you have. It depends on the people in leadership positions. It depends on the goals of the company, the nature of the company. Um, yeah. And I think that a lot of things, um, a lot of, of, of uh, I lost my train of thought. I'm, I don't remember the question. <laughs> um, I was saying to you, what do you think about people um, when managers are in a position of um, leadership quite high up, should they, you know, still be able to connect with their people? Right, right. So, so no, so there is no recipe to this. And, um, yeah. and, and I think that just being approachable is huge. So if mm-hmm. an employee doesn't get shut down, you know, because if that happens once, yeah, best believe if, you know, you're putting a barrier up. If you are uh, someone who tends to not support 
your staff, mm -hmm. then, then they're not likely to, to even try to come to you. Um, okay. You know, so if, so if you've got a, 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 some, a, like a, like a, like a productivity well-being installed in the office, then that'll mm -hmm. shine through and that person's going to be able to, outside of the meeting, uh, bring up something uh, and talk to you. That makes sense. What do you think? One other question from the audience. What do you think of managers who make a mistake? How should they react to keep your respect? Recognize it. Yeah. If you just recognize it, oh, my bad. Um, okay. Uh, so here's what happened. Here's how I can fix it. And here's how I can prevent it from now on. Mm -hmm. um, and that's it. Not Don't place more importance than it, there needs to be. And don't not recognize it and identify it and and say how we're going to be able to prevent it yeah. and that's whether it's an employee or a manager if you're a manager and you own up to that mistake and you say this is what, what i'm going to do to fix it and this is how we're preventing it from now on great make 10 mistakes a day if you want because that's productive it's productive i don't yeah. mind and i'll back and, and i'll learning. respect you yeah, I, yeah you know why you made that mistake you're going to try not to do it again and this is what you're going to do to avoid it no problem and then i'm allowed to say oh my bad. So here's how I'm going to fix it. And here's how I'm going to prevent it. Mm -hmm. And you. it's such that accountability wall you were speaking about with people kind of going, oh, I don't know, that wasn't me. It must have been a yeah. big person. Yeah. Finance. It must have been this. That accountability ball. Let's just play yeah. hot potato and yeah. mobilize 19 people for three months. And at the end of it, and at the end of it, the mistake happens again because we mm -hmm. never actually fixed it or tried to prevent it. No. Just pass oh. it around. <laughs> and that actually makes a good leader. Ah, let, see, if your employees are repeatedly putting time and effort into trying to fix the same thing, yeah. there's an issue. Ask and find out. Yeah, that's brilliant. We have another question. Um, this one's from Fawzia. It says, when you, when you get problems to communicate with your team, what do you do first? Do you think to give the same solution for anyone in your team? Yeah. Do you need to be that again? Are you okay? No, no. I think it's tricky because yes, you sh should technically be giving the same um, protocol, like like a the a, 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 a procedure to follow. I get like the same yeah. steps to follow. So, I, so I guess you always, and they tell you this in conf uh, conflict uh, resolution. Resolution. Always address the person first. Mm -hmm. as a as a as a colleague like the respect the professionalism so you address the problem with the person it involves first and you try to meet each other halfway understand where each other comes from so there needs mm -hmm. to be honesty to actually voice it and then and then try to meet each other halfway now sometimes this becomes tedious and never ending and it doesn't always get resolved so don't waste so much time and effort okay, let's move up to the next thing. The manager, this is what's going on. Uh, but again, professionally, mm -hmm. concisely, don't extrapolate with every little reason why this is bothering you. No, no, the facts, the facts. That's what it is. Stick to the facts, professionally. Mm -hmm. And don't attack the person for it. Just stick to the facts professionally and see where that gets you. Does that make sense? It does, it definitely makes sense. We have about five minutes left. I do have a couple more questions that I would like to ask, but I'd love to put it to the audience in case there's anything that they wanted to ask and um, just let you know you have about five minutes. So if you have any questions, do feel free to put it in the chat or um, in the Q&A um, and we will ask them. While you're doing that, I'll ask another one of my questions. Um, so we described this woman in leadership session as being about people with no corporate ambition. Um, so not wanting to climb the ladder doesn't mean that you don't want to be the best at what you do. And you've kind of, you know, made that very clear that you still, you know, you have a strong work ethic and you do believe in doing the best that you can do in the roles you want. Um, do you find that your work ethic ever contradicts that of those around you? Do people kind of look at you like, stop overachieving, you're making me look bad a little bit because I'm doing, you know, the bare minimum I have to do to do my job well and there you are overachieving yeah 
Yeah, uh, yes, sometimes. Um, sometimes for sure. I have a, a bit of an aversion toward um, laziness and re repeating the same mistakes mm -hmm. constantly. I There's something that just at some point I, and my professionalism starts to drop. Um, yeah. Um, so yes, but at the same time, I'm usually not coming in with a lot of expertise. I'm usually humble mm -hmm. at the beginning because I do not know what I'm doing. I am not the expert. And I also am taking the spot of someone who maybe would make a career out of it. And I recognize yeah. that all the time. So I come in wanting to learn how, what, how to do the job, thinking mm -hmm. I know nothing about it. And then, and then trying to do the job well and then I move to trying to perfect the system or trying to tweak it so it's more efficient. But until I get to that stage, I'm, I'm, you know, even even once I get to that stage, it's it's a team. It's a, it needs to work with the team. I can't do yeah. anything alone, and I can't be bitter at my desk because I have been bitter at my desk drafting emails and you know like um, drafting them and looking at them the next day because they're they're you know not professional. Be worded <laughs> the tone is not right um and then become that person that loner and that person who just doesn't want anything to do with my team mm. so that's not good either so so caring too much or overachieving without your team means nothing what's the point mm. so uh, you know and that's where i need to learn as an employee and i need to be brought down a peg and I need to be coached and I need to you know without taking me by the hand you don't want to have to take your employees by the hand absolutely mm -hmm. not but you know a, a very professional calling out on is totally okay yeah if it's needed professionally privately call me out on stuff oh mm -hmm. damn okay sure yeah you know but usually I'm a team player I want to be a team player I don't want to be a leader I don't yeah it's scary I want to be a follower. I'm like second in command. Give it to me. Direct me. I'll do it. Yeah. Um, so, you know. Thank you. It's all about balance, isn't it? It's about finding that balance. About oh, I heard it's all about violence. I'm like, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no, balance. Yeah. yeah. Definitely balance. Yeah. Balance, absolutely. Um, yes. What advice would you give to managers or you know those in positions of power who want to be good leaders? If there was, you know, one key piece of advice, you've really explained what you believe makes a good leader, but is there any advice for those who want to become better, better leaders, better people? Um, I think, yeah, um, Sorry, big question. Continuously, yeah, it is, excuse me. But <laughs> continuously adapt and evolve. Mm -hmm. Continuously. Nothing is for granted because even if a tool has been working really well for you, even if you've been getting really good at something, a team member can change the entire dynamic and you have to be able to roll with those changes. So yeah. never take anything you've learned so far for granted. You're dealing with humans. Mm -hmm. So it needs to evolve constantly and, um, and that's okay. It's totally okay to something that's been working for you for 10 years can now be something that you put aside and exchange for something else or that you polish off a different way or that you you know just throw out of your toolbox forever um and that's totally fine it doesn't mean everything you've done before with that tool is shit it just means that you are now doing something different yeah and and allow yourself to change even as a leader that's been there for like 20 years it's kind of like a, when you have a style when you're young when you're a yeah. teenager, right? You're a rocker. And then in like the next day you start feeling like, oh, you know, I think I'm good. I want like, I want to go pink now. I want to be into flowers and dresses. Yeah. And you're like, I can't do that. I've been a rocker with Converse and ACDC on my t-shirt. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, but just like a teenager would be as an adult in a position of leadership, why don't you just try something different? So what? And, and voice sure. it. bring your team in, tell your team, inform them, be transparent. Hey, we're going to try this. Might not work, but that's what we're trying this week. Yeah. It's a big life lesson. 
and even as you said even if it fails it's a lesson it's a lesson in humility it's a lesson in trying and getting it's brushing yourself back up and trying something else again and that's all yeah. very important yeah thank trust you trust in your competence if you're in that position yeah. you've got competence trust in it and and let's see what that trust and forgiveness in yourself brings you mm -hmm. for sure i love it thank you does anyone have any more questions we have literally about 30 seconds to go but i'm more than happy if there's another question that you want to ask and um, to you know to throw it in the chat um otherwise but you know by all means email us or whatever and we can see if we can pass questions on but if not i don't think there's any more questions so in which case um amory thank you so much for joining us so thank you so much for being so honest and frank with us about about everything thank you for giving me this opportunity. I never in a million years would have thought I would be uh, talking about, about this, about employee and uh, leadership as, a, as an employee. So thank you for the opportunity and for doing these sessions. It's awesome, thank you. And for oh, everybody thanks. who's listening to even make yeah. time to listen, thank you, that's just great. I think that's, you know, the way that leaders learn is from their employees and maybe it's one of those things that they can't always ask their employees. It's, you know, open it on, honestly. So you're giving them a chance to kind of work out what, you know, the people they work with might be thinking or feeling. So, you know, we've been able to gain something from all of your knowledge and all of the years of, you know, working within these companies. So we thank you very much for doing that and good luck with your acting and good luck with yep. everything opening up a bit more and you being able to actually do face-to-face, -face, you know, acting and screenings yeah, and table yeah. reads. So exciting. Um, thank you. And again, thank you for everyone who's listened. If you joined late and weren't able to catch the beginning of it, we will we have recorded this so it will be available on replay. We'll send an email out so that you can watch it later on. Um, and yeah, join us next month for the next instalment. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye.